Hey there, welcome back to the Win A Pageant Podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. Now this episode features a client of mine who agreed to three specific things, to be coachable, to be vulnerable, and to have her coaching session recorded and published in order to help you. So I know that a lot of women who haven't had pageant coaching before don't really know what to expect or how much can you really even get done in 30 minutes. So this client of mine agreed to have her session recorded in order to show you what gets done and how it gets done during a virtual coaching session. Okay. So I want you to listen to this call from two different perspectives. First of all, I want you to think, could pageant coaching, especially virtually, even be something that could help you in your pageant prep. I want you to be thinking about that. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you could make that a reality for you. Uh, The second thing that I really, really want you to pay attention to is I want you to think the things that I'm sharing with her, the coaching that I'm giving her, how can you apply that coaching to your own pageant prep, okay? What are the things that she's learning in this and the skills that she's developing and the strategy that she's learning? How can you apply that to yourself? I'm so grateful that this client allowed me to record this call because I know a lot of the things that she learned during this call will support you in your pageant prep. So sit back with an open mind, maybe get a notepad and a pen handy because a lot of this coaching is gonna apply to you too, all right? Enjoy. Tell me what, like, how can I help you? Where do we want to start? So I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, to be honest. And it's the idea of, you know, we're all doing this so we can leave something better than where we found it. And that's the whole purpose behind that legacy project. For me, I kind of honed down on what my mission is and why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I shared that with you prior. And it's, you know, to inspire and empower women to lead healthier lives. That's connected back because I suffered an aneurysm last um, summer and really had to change things up from my health, um, eating better, sleeping better, you know, physical activity, just the basic things which is why I decided to make um, the plunge and give myself permission to go into this um, and communicate that as a way to inspire other women. Now, along the way, as I've been doing this, I noticed that a lot of my friends have been asking me, you know, what are you doing? Are you look better? You know, you're more energized, what's going on? And so I'd share with them, here's my trainer, or here's my nutritionist, and here's what I'm doing. And I, in general, I have no problem eating well. I love cooking. I grew up in a household that that's all we did, you know? Um, and so for me, I actually developed this unique acronym and it's to be simply beautiful is what how I've titled it simply within um, with SEM so focusing on self-care economic prosperity and mental health um, as kind of the three pillars to a healthy okay, say lifestyle. them again say them again self-care economic prosperity and mental health And the reason I picked those three is because they're all connected to, you know, if you're eating well and you're living kind of that healthy lifestyle, it bleeds into those areas. I also chose them because they personally touch on things that I've been doing. So I've been taking better care of myself. The work that I do focuses on empowering others um, in their workforce, on, you know, defining their idea, turning it into a business practice. And then the mental health component is something, you know, everybody struggles with. For me, it was that, you know, temporary depression whenever I found out I was unhealthy. Um, And then going back, growing up in a home where, you know, I had my dad who is physically handicapped from the waist down. And so he, um, you know, there are a handful of days I remember that are great. The rest are you know, from one medication to waking up to feeling better and all that type of stuff. So I felt like all three were good ways of grabbing everything that I'm currently doing. And then it was just kind of a nice way to create that hashtag of simply beautiful. So I'm kind of stuck on where to launch it from here. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. This is good. Well, first of all, I, it is so obvious you've gone through the game plan to me. Like, it's so interesting to talk to women who've done it and you're like, okay, here it is. Bam, bam, bam. Like, here's all of my life's work collected into this one legacy project. And for people who haven't gone through the game plan, they don't even know what that looks like. So kudos to you for actually doing the work in the game plan because it's, I know it is not easy and yet 
that's why not everybody's winning, like, because this isn't an easy process. Like, not everyone actually can do it, you know? So, or, or rather, everyone can, they just don't, I suppose, you know? So kudos to you for actually doing it and implementing the work. It's awesome. I love this. Um, okay, so tell me, so you, you've you got the model, you have the understanding of it, but it sounds like you haven't actually put it into the world in any specific way. Is Am I hearing Correct. that right? That is right. So, and that's my biggest, you know, I wondered if, if I wanted to do just like a, a website and have people just take the pledge to be simply beautiful. And as they sign up and, and say that they're taking this pledge, then I turn around and I give them, you know, meal prep for three days, like a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a nutritional program, regardless of who you are, you could be able to follow it, you know? Um, or I okay. thought about just doing video uh, just a video series that's meal planning or I just I don't know where I want to go from it and I've partnered with so the American Heart Association is who I've partnered with as an empowered to serve ambassador since they focus more on the multicultural communities and how we're more affected by cardiovascular disease Um, and then I've also uh, worked with them as a healthy for life facilitator since that's more on the food side so eating better and reading food labels and things like that and then the last was the Go Red, um, which is for the women empowerment division that they have. And then I've based on, there was a time a while ago I'd asked, you know, should I do multiple organizations? And so I reached out to um, NAMI as well, the National uh, Mental Health Group, um, to see about what ways to partner with them. So I haven't really, so that's kind of in, in the works. But outside of it, I'm not. I guess I'm hung up on where do I take it from here and launch it? And then where would it fit in this partnership that I'm yep. looking to create with these organizations? Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, we're going to try to solve both of those things in the next 20 minutes. So, um, All right. but first, let me ask you a bunch of questions so I just fully understand. So, yes. um, so how do you... Set that aside for a second. And and let me ask you this. How do you creatively express yourself? Like, what are what are some of the things that you enjoy doing? Are you a singer? Do you like to draw? Do you like what are how do you creatively express? Yeah. So um, I'm not a singer. You don't want to hear that. But (laughs) so like my free the things that I enjoy doing, you know, I like writing poetry. I also like cooking um, significantly. And then I love fur babies and going out on walks. So those are kind of my. Cool. Okay, this is good. All right. So writing poetry, um, what would happen if you wrote poems about being simply beautiful. Okay. Have you tried that? Have I've you not. tried that? So okay. and the reason I haven't is sometimes it, whenever I, so when I write, it usually comes in different mood increments as opposed to controlling it based on the content that I want to. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. That That's very creative of you. <laughs> Only a true creative would say that. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let's set that aside. Let me ask you this. If if I'm the type of person that you were, how, how long ago was your aneurysm? So it was last July. Last July. Okay. So, boy, wow, that wasn't that long ago. Wow. No, You've made a lot of changes. I have made a lot of changes and um, I've recovered from it. So that was great. And so yeah. it took about six months of recovery, but I'm off of all medications and I'm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So imagine the person that you were before the, like last January, let's say, Mm -hmm. okay, before the aneurysm happened, there were things that you were doing in your life that you are either not doing now, that you are doing differently, or that you weren't doing then that you are doing now. Okay. You've made changes. What are some of those tangible things that you could just tell me, like, if you just listed off a bunch, like, what would they be? Yeah. So, so first off, I'm, I'm eating better. I cut out, you know, caffeine and alcohol. I sleep eight hours a day. Um, I have physical activity, activity at least two to three days out of the week. Um, and then as far as what, so scheduling myself personal time, that's not something that I did before. So it was all work, right? So I'd work yeah. all the way until about, um, four or five and then probably eat at that point And then, um, work a little bit and go to bed. So it was just work. There wasn't the personal 
balance or component to it. Um, okay. And now I intentionally stop. So if it's five or six, that's it. I don't work on weekends. I refuse to even check my emails. Wow. Um, and I give myself <laughs> time to, yeah. you know, if I get bored, I'll check my personal emails or I'll focus on something else that's of interest or, you know, go out or connect with other people. So it's a little bit about some of the stuff I've done. That's good. Tell me about um, what you've changed for economic prosperity. So that has been more of, well, that's a good idea. That's a good question. I haven't necessarily changed anything on economic prosperity. I think I've had that as like a strong theme in my life. So from when I was in grad school and focused on the published work I did on female empowerment through social entrepreneurship, that was all economic prosperity focused. The work that I do in chamber and that world is economic prosperity um, and in helping those people. Um, And then at one point I had a small business. So that's kind of where that one is. Okay, cool. And then mental health. Tell me what you've done for Mm -hmm. that change. Yeah. So that's been a lot more of, you know, reading quotes and articles and um, enjoying going outdoors, listening to music and things like that. Just different times to meditate by myself and really absorb my feelings. Okay, cool. This is good. All right. So I feel like the E is not necessary. Okay. And it's, it's not that you, um, um, actually, let me ask, when you say simply beautiful, tell, tell me again, the title that you're calling this and spell it for me. Yes. So it's to be simply beautiful. S E M P L E. P L Y simply beautiful, simply beautiful. Okay. And, um, all right. And, and to be simply beautiful is to have those three components to have self care, to have economic prosperity and to have mental health. And those three things make you simply beautiful as I, yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, I feel like the economic prosperity aspect is certainly a part of you, but I don't think that it needs to be a part of the legacy project because I think it's going to add some level of confusion if it's not directly related to your origin story, which is the fact Mm -hmm. that you had an aneurysm and you made these certain changes to build up your self-care and your mental health. Um, Okay. um, But I want to think through it a little bit more because... It is uh, because you've got an E in there. So we got to figure out uh, what we're going to do with that. Um, I'm I'm wondering if perhaps there is self-care as an um, external element, emotional balancing or something, which are some of the things you talked about with like having personal time, um, setting work boundaries, stuff like that. And then mental health, which is what you mentioned about quotes and reading articles and kind of positivity. Perhaps you focus on those as SEM being self-care is like, you know, take a shower, like sleep, like take care of yourself as a human, you know, and then E emotionally check. How do you feel like do you need to be working on weekends? Like probably not. You're probably exhausted mentally like you know, take a break from that and emotionally, like, you know, maybe even emotionally step back. Like uh, you mentioned, um, oh, like caffeine, you mentioned sleep, but like caffeine is probably like a physical self-care thing. But then there's emotional things like personal time and whatnot, maybe journaling or I don't know what else you did. You could probably make a giant list. But I feel like those three work together a lot smoother than the economic prosperity because okay. economic, okay. I just feel like economic prosperity, unless you unless I'm missing something, maybe there are some really specific key things that you could like teach someone. But even when you mentioned like your work with the American Heart Association, those things are all related to physical and uh, mental, emotional. Um, the mental health is also likely those are, none. Not, those are not economic prosperity. And. You, you also want to be careful about one thing I've noticed in pageants is that it's OK if you have a business or an offering or you're a consultant or something, 
But what gets hairy, what judges don't like is when they feel like you are using your platform to push your own business or career forward. So okay. that kind of creates a little bit of like a, that's that's a tough thing to navigate. It's totally doable, but it's a little bit. So by putting the E in there, I feel like it throws it off enough that it's going to make it a little too, too, too broad, I guess, you know, not really right. like clear enough. So, um, but if we exchange that for emotional well-being, my guess is that there are aspects of the yeah. work that you've done that could be categorized as that. Does that make sense? I like that. Yeah. So self-care, emotional well-being, and then mental health. And tie exactly. in the, the emotional from some of what I've already done for the self-care. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So kind of segmenting them as the physical, the emotional, and the mental. And these are the ways that we can, that we can like, really just be better humans, you know, like be, right. in your, in your words, be beautiful, you know, to, from, to build who we are as individuals and then express that. Um, yeah. So that I love. Okay. So now if we, if we look at those three elements, um, you mentioned a website, I think, Did, have you built a website before? I would imagine I so. Is it? I have, I have okay. well, I've, built a pretty basic one so I can do like okay. a pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what other, what other ways do you like market to the public? Like, have you done lots of stuff with social media? Do you have a Facebook group? Like what other areas of marketing are you uh, Re related to this project? I no, haven't. just in general, just like, what do you know? What are you uh, good at? Yeah. In general, I'm used to doing websites, emails, social media, YouTube, that type of stuff. Excellent. Okay. Um, what's your favorite social media outlet? Um, so for a lot of what I'm doing right now, like related to pageant, I've had my Instagram focus on that since my Facebook is predominantly work. So okay. it's my way of separating the two. Okay, cool. Good. All right. So play with me here for a moment. Let's brainstorm out some, some ideas of how this could, like what this could look like. Um, I'm envisioning if you were to have simply beautiful be first the work would be like how would you create this so first the work would be you would need to make lists of like what is the the social or i mean the oh social mm -hmm. interesting well let's come back to that i'm going to table that but okay. i was thinking maybe the s is social emotional mental maybe those okay. are the three ways of self care perhaps it could be social emotional mental are all S beautiful and they're all self-care like I don't know okay hang on let's come back to that anyways okay. the idea is is you create the list of whatever is s the list of whatever's the e and the list of whatever is the m and then um you then you've got your content so that's essentially your content so your things like this are going to be remove caffeine sleep x amount of hours a night uh, create work boundaries set up personal time you might even like walk your dog like stuff like that would be on these lists, okay? Very okay. basic things, okay. Then, the next time you do the thing, when you're feeling in the mood, so you're gonna get yourself into the state of whatever, cooking, okay? So when you're in it, and you're like, oh, this is great, and you're swirling your red wine, and like stirring your pasta sauce <laughs> and stuff, and you know, instead of like watching reruns of Friends or something, I want you to be writing a poem about it. Just like, start writing poems about these things, okay? You don't have to publish them, but some of them are gonna be so good that you're gonna be like, oh, this is this is catchy, you know? Some of them are gonna be small, like short, and, and some of them will rhyme and some of them won't, and some of them are gonna end up being like three pages long and you'll take snippets of it or whatever, but I just want you to get into creation mode, okay? Start creating poems. As over like the course of, I don't know, three days, five days a week, whatever, you're going to start to have like maybe you do it in a journal and they're all in the same thing, you know, or I, I love these types of these like a legal pad because they're easy to just like keep handy. I can flip through it really quickly like it's e cost effective. I, I don't feel bad using up the paper, you know, but then you can go back and say, OK, which of these do I feel like it's it's. And, and, and really, Julia, it's probably going to be most of them, like probably most of them will be able to be pushed out in some way. So then you can use, have you used Canva before? Yes, I use it for okay. a lot, yeah. I figured you had. Okay, so Canva would be a great resource for you to kind of, to maybe take a snippet of your poem. 
So a, a, a line or a phrase or something and make a nice little graphic. And then in the description, or, or maybe the poem could be its own graphic, you know, but you make it lovely. You pick a couple colors that you feel like emulate your brand and then you put those poems on those things or those, those outtakes of the poems. Then the caption is the poem itself, okay? You start just writing about about these kind of things. It would be it would be awesome if you had a um, even if it was just a simple website or a simple um, if you've used Canva, you could even create a um, document of like like a little quick something that if you emailed it to somebody, they could print it out, and it would mm-hmm. say like ideas for social, emotional, and mental care. I don't know why I'm coming back to social. I feel like. Okay. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, if that would resonate with you or not, but perhaps it could. Um, so, so anyway, then, so now you're, you're pushing it out there. You're kind of testing it, testing out how's it feel. And eventually once you get, I don't know, a hundred of these or so now you've got a coffee table book. So now you could publish this as a coffee table book with your poem excerpts and the, like as the graphic and then the poem itself as the text printed on like a good size thing. And now it's a coffee table book. So after you win, now you're selling that and in the proceeds of that benefit these various organizations. You could choose one or something else or you could create your own kind of scholarship or fund or who knows what it will it will, you know, morph into at that time. Um, but that OK, so that's like a crazy brainstorm. How do you feel about that? That's an, I I like it. I mean, it's a more doable than what I was thinking initially with, you know, where I wanted to take it because I was getting overwhelmed with what can I like everything that I can do and yeah. it ends up being so much. And where yeah. do you stop? Um, I do like the social component because and how you ended it with care. Like I like how you said social, emotional, mental care. care. So yeah. it's not just the stand. Yeah, I like that. Um and I think it's more fluid than the initial one as well. So I do yeah, like those. Nice. Um, the coffee table book was interesting because I thought about that as well um, when I was brainstorming through ideas for legacy like, projects. And I was like, well, maybe I can do like coffee, like coffee shop tours as I like as I'm going around. You know, I could stop in a coffee shop and then just invite people to catch up and go through that stuff. So, um, but what would you drink cool. at a coffee shop? What would you drink there? Right. Tea. <laughs> like, yeah. So I don't think I, I don't think that a coffee shop relates to your brand because that's yeah. not you're not a coffee shop gal. Yeah. Like you might go to a juice shop or something, you know, like okay. or whatever. Like, think about your brand. So if you're saying like, hey, look, right, right. one of the ways that has supported me is to get off of caffeine, you know, and sure, you could still drink tea, whatever. But like I just drink tea and I can get blasted on green tea like I get, you know. Uh, one green tea and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like it still is caffeine. It still affects your hormones. It still affects your sleeping. It still affects your brain chemistry. It still affects everything. So, you know, if you're saying, hey, look, I, I think my body functioned better when I was off of it. And I think it's worth a try. I think others ought to try it. Well, then don't do the, co- but a table book, anything right. you can stick on your coffee table, that's something that you know, or in your bathroom, you know, like it could be a bathroom, maybe you make it small and it's a bathroom book and you put it by the toilet or something, you know, like, or it's maybe it's a calendar, a flip calendar. And so every day there's a new, like, it's a tip for self care and a little poem that goes with it, you know, something like that. So what I, what I, the vision of this. So if you were to go in this type of direction, let me, let me, hang on, let me reverse, reverse. Okay. So when you first started, you said you were overwhelmed. <laughs> I think that your overwhelm yeah, came yeah. from the emotional support, the mental support, the um, and then the economic prospering. And you're trying to tie all the things together. But right, we want right. to more curate, right? We want to like delete the things that don't make sense and keep the things that are really solidly aligned. So I think already this is going to help with your with your like organization in your mind too. And it's this this call comes at perfect timing. I'm so glad that we're that book this call now instead of waiting like in three months from now yeah. when you got this SEM thing going and it's like going crazy and whatever. So it's good mm-hmm. that we did it now. We caught it before, you know, it got out of control. So this is great. Um, you still have right, some time right. before your pageant. So this is good. Um, 
I definitely want to encourage you to do your creation in the like like you could batch a lot of your creation you know like take a Saturday for example you do a lot of this stuff already you know like you drink your tea or whatever in the morning like take five minutes and just make a poem and just be like I'm gonna write a poem right now I don't care if it's good bad or ugly I'm just gonna write one and at the end of that five minutes you have to have a poem and it might be terrible and if it's terrible, mm-hmm. who cares? You don't have to put it out, you know? Right. But you're just going to start getting in the habit of of writing because that's something that's so unique. Okay, so then yeah. Yeah. let's flash forward after you have get this thing going and you feel comfortable mm-hmm. with it and stuff. You're going to eventually hit a wall. We're going to be like, I can't just keep writing poems about the same stuff all the time, right? <laughs> now is when you're going to need other people to join the movement. So once you, as the leader, showcase what it looks like, what does social, emotional, and mental health actually look like? So now you've got people bought into that. You've used your hashtags. So when they look it up on your social media, they see what it looks like to write poems about these things. They see a variety of different things. They're all very positive. They're very, some of them are like, you know, bold and and strong and others are soft and abstract and they get the feel of it. Now you say, hey, share your story. You tell others, share your story. How did you overcome something by by exercising social, emotional, and mental care? Because so many people, I've found that either people are on the the are on the they haven't realized it yet side of it, so they know all the things and they're like, oh yeah, I I know everyone tells me that, but like I'm good. So they're either on that or they've had the awakening and been like, oh snap. Like, I got I to figure this out. And then they're sold out to it. Then they're like, oh, yes. Like, like personally for me, I, I had adrenal fatigue and it wiped me out. So I had to start sleeping more. I sleep nine hours a night. Right. Seven if I must, but I sleep nine hours a night because I need sleep to make sure that my hormones are functioning, my energy is up, like all of that thing is still good to go. So I've had that awakening in sleep. So that's something that I could share about how I'm simply beautiful, you know, and I could write a poem and I could tell you, hey, here's my story, you know, and then you start collecting other people's stories. Those also could end up in this coffee book, you know, the, the more people that you have as a part of your movement who agree with you and who have experienced something similar and are willing to be advocates of it, you know, the better. Like you want to get people on board with it so that it starts to, you know, take a, a mind of its own. That's when it becomes a legacy project because now it no longer, it takes you to get it started. But after it gets right, going, right. now you're just collecting other people's stories. They, they see the model. Now you're sharing that. Now it's like a whole new movement, you know? Mm-hmm. How's that feel? Yeah, yeah. I like that. That feels and sits really well. So can I ask you, and I know we're running long questions. I don't want to go over your yeah. time, but, okay. um, so sometimes it appears like we need to quantify things, right? So we have a goal that once we, um, we become this, then here's X, Y, Z. So I guess, where would we launch this next to quantify it? Like yeah. how would we- I think your very next step is that you go through about, I don't know, at least three days of your life. What are we? Uh, today's Wednesday. So you go through the rest of today, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, and you do those things. So you make the list. Mm-hmm. What are all the things that you've done? And then, and maybe if you want to make it fancy in Canva right now, you can. I would separate it into those three categories. Or for starters, just, just write it down. Like, just quickly write it down. That's going to take you 20 minutes, you know? Then... When you are exercising those things, like as you're laying down to go to sleep or first thing in the morning when you wake up and you're like laying in bed, do a poem, write a poem right then and there. And you're going to be writing. So over the course of the next week, who knows, you're going to be writing like a lot of poems and some of them are going to be good and some are going to be terrible. Then once you have them, then next week, sit down in front of Canva and start to kind of plug them in, start to say, okay, which of these do I want to publish? I would publish first on Instagram. You know what I would also recommend? I think your Instagram right now, um, I was just on it. I think that you have those story highlights already that say, yes. um, yeah, you've got family and power, health and self-care. So I would, I would rename them social care, emotional care, mental care, or whatever, you know, name them the things okay. that you want. And then when you post a image that's going to be your fancy Canva image, you're going to repost it to your stories. 
and you're gonna make it a story highlight in whichever one of those categories that it fits, okay? Okay. Then anytime, you can do this really all the time and you're good on camera, so you could do this where you're just like taking your dog for a walk And you're like, hey, guys, let me just tell you real quickly. I'm taking the dog for a walk. And here's why this is so important. Here's what happened. And here's why it's great. And, you know, and just something quick. Right. And then, okay, I'm cooking. Oh, my gosh, I love to cook today. I'm cooking, blah, 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 blah. Cooking is a part of my self-care routine. What's yours or whatever. And you're going to start to post these to the categories so that when I stumble upon you and I'm like, oh, mental care. Well, I need that. I can go to the mental care and I'm like, wow, mental care is is a lot of things that I could actually implement right now. Like, wow, she's saying that mental care is, you know, setting boundaries to kind of turn my brain off and and allowing myself to just stare at a wall for 20 minutes to kind of let myself, you know, settle and, and get my brain. Or she says that this is something, you know, she found a new meditation that I can do. Oh, that's cool. Like that, so you're gonna start to resource people with the things that you are already using. I would okay. say start there. So use your Instagram channel because that's the thing that you said you wanted to to build. Now, you will see that, number one, you're going to start getting people direct messaging you because you're going to be doing this enough that people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea that happened to you. You're kidding. Wow, that happened to me, too. Then you start to get their stories. Oh, what happened? Like, oh, well, do you want to write a poem for my Instagram? Like, hey, so you're going to start to get conversations going with people you're gonna to start to see, I we don't know right now what will come of it, but I promise you stuff will come of it. Um, probably those one-on-one conversations, you'll likely grow your Instagram channel over that course of time. You'll likely see your um, influx of like people that are engaging with you, things like that. You'll start hearing people's stories. Then I would start to get out and do, uh, you know, you could even start doing on your, like do an IGTV, that teaches specifically on each one of these topics. So you could do an IGTV that specifically teaches about social, a different one that specifically teaches about emotional, and another one that teaches about the third. And then once everybody comes back to life here, once everybody gets out of their house, you could then reach out to people and start to speak to organizations about these three things and tell your story. And, and it's simple because it's like I suffered an aneurysm and through these three ways of self-care, I have been able to heal completely and get off my meds in less than six months. Like that's pretty amazing, you know? So the, quanti- the quantify will come as the thing develops, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's terrific. Cool. And then for your pageant, when you get to your pageant, they are – you're going to want to share like what's the next step what's the big picture here what's your real goal um i want you to think around i am not i'm not fully certain if this aligns with you or not cuz I, I don't quite know enough but it might the whole like coffee table book thing where you either give it away or you sell it or and the proceeds benefit something or something along those lines um or the calendar flip calendar or whatever you end up discovering or coming up with maybe you sell journal self-guided journals I don't know but something along those lines if you if you end up doing something like that which could be simple for you to do with your experience in marketing and and websites and stuff like that you obviously have business acumen so you should you could do something like this and then you, you use that to leverage that for whatever is the next big thing that you would be able to do when you win the pageant right so um Maybe it's the proceeds benefit, one of those organizations. Perhaps as you go through this project, you will discover other organizations and other people that you um, can support during this, you know. People are on social media right now like none, like never before. It's, It's crazy how much people are on social. So this is a good time to start something like this because people are there, the audience is there for you, you know. So be worth worth a go for it, yeah. Cool. So does this help you? Thank have you. Now- you. Yes, my pleasure. I feel so much better. <laughs> I do. I feel so much better. Um, I really have been going back and forth on this for like months now after I tried to hone in as much as I could. <laughs> yes. And, oh, my goodness. Just having you with me walk through definitely helps. And that's what I've loved on everything that you've provided. It's just walking through to understand yourself. 
Um, and that's just the hardest thing, you know, is guiding yourself to answer it in the way that you want to, you know? Yes. Oh, it's so true. It helps so much to have somebody else reflect back to you, you know, understanding the path you're going on and still be able to say, okay, here's what I see in you. Because it is, it is hard to discover yourself, you know, that is not easy to do. Yeah. I so agree. good. Well, thank you Yay. so much. My pleasure, Juliet. I'm glad we had this opportunity to do it. Keep me posted, okay? Let me know how it goes. Okay. Okay. Ooh, wasn't that good stuff? Oh, I hope you learned so much from her. I know I had so much fun doing this strategy call with her as we usually do. It's fun. So two things. If you need to hear more of these strategy sessions, because they're so good and you can learn so much from them, then just search strategy sessions because I have a few more clients that also agreed to be recorded. So you'll be able to look at the behind the scenes of their calls as well. And then if you are ready to schedule your strategy session, you can go to winapageant.com slash coaching. That's going to take you to my calendar so you can see what a Appointments are available and when you can book yours. And you'll also see pricing options there, which types of calls are available and how much do each of them cost. And you can book your call directly from there. I cannot wait to work with you. Head over to winapageant.com slash coaching to check it out. I'll see you next time.